Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm going to paint a famous scene in Australia in the outback called Uluru, or you may have heard of it as Ayers Rock. It was actually a suggestion sent on my Facebook group. Often I won't do very specific scenes, but I'm going to give this a go. I might not copy it in the most exact minute detail, but I'll give the general effect of that location. So I'm using the app Procreate on an iPad, but you can probably replicate this on a different app on a different tablet too. So I'm going to show you the basics of the tutorial. And on that basis, I've opened an A4 canvas within the app. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using airbrushing, soft brush, and medium brush, the brushes at the top. Within sketching, I'm going to be using the 6B pencil. And within the artistic, I'm going to be using the leatherwood brush. I've already selected some colors and created a palette. And in the video description, you can take a look and there is a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download this color file for free. Also in the description are the color codes, the hexadecimal codes. And if you go to this section, tap on value, you can type each code one at a time in there, press enter, the color appears up here and you can just start to tap it together and construct it yourself. If you do have a go and you're pleased with your results, then you can share them with me. I'll have links for my Instagram where you can tag me and a Facebook group that's got over 30 plus thousand members where I get to give you feedback and other people get to give you feedback on your work as well. I've also started a TikTok account, still early days, but again, the links for all those things are down in the video description. With all that said and done, let's get started. So on our A4 canvas, we're gonna to go to our first colors. The first color, I'm just gonna drag and drop it into the canvas and it flood fills that entire space. Create another layer, go back to our colors, skip the dark color, we'll come back to that, but we've got a second color here and with the airbrushing, and soft brush. I'm going to put the brush size up to about 15% and 100% opacity. And just a little bit down from the top, I'm just going to do one big stripe like this, go to my adjustments, go to my Gaussian blur and slide it across to about 50%. Create another layer, go back to my colors, choose the fourth color in, and we're going to do something very similar, but we're just going to make it slightly smaller, so about 12%. And just at the bottom section of what we've just created, we'll do a yellow stripe instead. Now we go back to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blend it in to about 40%. We'll create another layer, go back to our colors, and we'll go for the fifth color now. And we're gonna do, again, very similar. So we'll just reduce it down a little bit more to about 9%. And again, this bottom section, just as it starts to blend into the background blue, We'll add that again to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and blur it to about 30% this time. Just to keep things really straightforward, I'm just going to take the top three layers and pinch them together, which will merge them. Another thing that I'm going to do with that layer is I'm going to slide it to the left, duplicate it, and you can see it's just amplified and exaggerated the colors that we've now got. I'm going to just blur it in a little bit more, go back to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we'll just blur it in again to about the 30% and it just really softens those transitions. Just another notch. We'll go back to our layers. Again, we may as well merge down that layer so it's now still on one layer. We'll create another layer, go back to our colors. And we'll come back to this color now, the second color. It is the darkest sky color that we're gonna use pretty much. So we're not gonna need this to be very strong. We're just gonna do a hint of it. So we're gonna put it back up to about 15% size but I'm going to reduce it down to 50% opacity. And I'm just going to do a hint of it at the very top and a hint of it at the very top there. And maybe just, just slightly nudge it into the very top section there as well, but hardly anything. Then we'll go back to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, blend it in to something like about 35% or thereabouts, depending on how you've applied it yourself. I'm going to create another layer. On this new layer, I'm just gonna to go to the very end color there, and I'm going to be using the soft brush still. I'm gonna put it at around 2% size, but really quite low on the opacity. It's just going to be a guideline, so about 20% should do. And we're just gonna put it just under the halfway point. It doesn't matter if it's a straight line or not, because you can just hold it until it snaps to a straight line, and then you can tidy it up. And if you're not happy with it, you can go to edit shape. You can see it's now selected it at both ends, and if you just drag the line, you can then put it exactly where you want it to go. So I'm going to put it about there. And I'm going to paint over it, but it's going to be there as a guide as to where I'm going to stop. 
So I'll create a new layer above that and I go back to my colors and I'm going to use this blue color, which is essentially very, very similar to the background blue that we've already used, but I'm still going to use it on the soft brush. I'm going to put it at the 2% size and really low on the opacity still at 20%. And just as we come into this section, I'm going to start creating some bands. In fact, we'll put it really low down. So it's the smallest end of 2% and we'll just create some stripes that run across here. In this bottom section, just some lines that cut across a little bit. Don't need to be too specific. You can get the general effect just with keeping it quite loose, quite rough. And then we're going to have Ayers Rock or Uluru Rock there. And then we don't need to worry too much underneath or behind, but we may as well continue the line. It does no harm. And then we'll just continue it over to this section. I'm going to use a dark color for over this area too. Create a new layer, go back to our colors. We'll go to this orange color. Still on the soft brush, we'll put it up to about 6%, low on the opacity at around 10%. And I'm just gonna bring the orange in a little bit more over here. And then it can disappear as it goes further over to the sides. We don't want too much of it over here at all, but we can build it up on this side. So we can start on the very edge and bleed it in from that side. We can bring it up a little bit further too. Again, it doesn't matter if it goes over this blue. I'm only pressing very, very lightly. So I have got it on set on 10%, but in combination with that, I could be pressing on hard, but I'm not. I'm pressing on very, very lightly. I'm almost letting the weight of the Apple Pencil set the opacity as well. So I'm not pressing on really. Allowing it to build up very gradually. And like I say, I'm letting it fade out over on this side. Now I'm going to reduce the size of that brush to 3% and even lower on the opacity at about 3% too. And there's going to be just a hint perhaps of just ever so slight disruption in that background. We don't want it to be super smooth. So just a hint of texture. It's going to be largely obscured by another cloud texture, but it does no harm just to give a hint of something. We're going to create another layer. Back to our colors. We've got this more of a red feature. So if you look at the colors, it's definitely more of an orange red. We'll have it back up at the 6% size and back at the 10% opacity. And just at the lower part of that, we're going to just build up the red. Again, we can keep going over it quite a few times and it's going to disappear behind the rock. Allow it to creep up a little bit. So we'll just let this creep up there a little bit more. We can always go back to the orange layer and increase some of that orange too. Feeling really like I'm missing a bit of yellow in that color palette. So I've added a yellow. I'm going to put it just on the end there. So you probably now see that the yellow has always been there if you've downloaded the colors. But you can see I've just added it mid tutorial. It'll be there from the beginning when you're starting there. We'll keep it at the 6% size and turn it down to about 5% opacity. And just on the orange layer that's underneath the red, I'm just going to creep in some more yellow and just bring a little bit more vibrancy of the yellow into that. I can also extend that a little bit across as well. That kind of works. We can always go back in a little later and amplify these colors if we need to, if we feel it's not powerful enough. Okay, so we're gonna create another layer. Go to the top and create that layer. Go back to our colors. And we've got this dark color that we haven't used yet. And that's gonna be down at this bottom section. So again, on the soft brush, I'm going to put it down to 4% size and again low on the opacity at 10% and I'm just going to again just this bottom section introduce this just to darken up this particular zone this this area but we're not going to overdo it we'll create another layer go back to our colors and we're going to use some of these colors now for more cloud texture so I'm going to go for the first color again with the soft brush set down to 2% size and we'll keep it at the 10% opacity. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to add it in small tufts. So just dashes, just points. And you can start to build this up and you can probably hear the tapping. And I will speed some of this up because it's going to take a little bit of time 
just to start to build up this texture, but it's really quite straightforward. It just takes a little bit of patience and sticking at it. So I have started with the lighter color. So we're gonna build a base up with this lighter gray. It's quite fragmented. It's quite an easy texture to create compared to some of the other cloud textures that sometimes do in my tutorials. I would say that you don't need to be too precious with this. Maybe as we get further towards that horizon line, some of those little points and textures can get a little bit smaller. And as they come further up, it's a sign that they're actually getting closer to us. Remember, nearer the horizon represents things further away, generally speaking, and things that are higher up here or lower down here represent things that are closer to us. So features like clouds generally will, the shapes will appear bigger here at the top and ground features will appear bigger when they're here at the bottom. So we'll do some bigger blobs, bigger shapes here at the very top, and then they get a little bit smaller as they get closer to that horizon line, as a general rule anyway. So I'll fast forward through some of this texture so you can see the overall effect build up quickly. Take the time, get it to the point that you're happy with it, but it's a pretty straightforward, so I'll just fast forward us through this. You can always turn the opacity up a little bit if you're feeling more confident. I'm going to put it up to 20%. Might just make it a little bit quicker. So leave some gaps. It doesn't all have to be totally clustered together. You will get some sections that, you know, you do find that you get areas that really do group together, but then you'll get some gaps as well. And as we get clouds nearer the top, you might want to introduce more of a circular motion just to create some of those forms, perhaps. And I'm also going to switch to a darker color. So I will create another layer for this. Go back to the colors and I've got this slightly darker gray and perhaps just over the top of some of these shapes, I can just introduce a slightly darker tone. I might want to turn the opacity back down a little bit. So I'm gonna put it at 15%. That's probably a good percentage for all of this cloud texture in fact. So I'm gonna leave it at 15% probably for the rest. So I can darken up some of these colors just so you can really see some of these forms at the very top. Most of my tutorials are not really about absolute photographic realness when I zoom in. So it's pretty much zoomed out and I keep it zoomed out to get you to the general effect. We go for a pretty much realism from a zoomed out perspective, but I want to get you to the point of it looking decent, fairly efficiently and fairly straightforwardly. So if you want to zoom in and look at those little details and really fine tune it, then do that to your heart's content. But within the space of about an hour of painting for me, and about half an hour of tutorial, we have to keep it quite loose really. But I do think once you've got the overall effect mastered, then you can really spend the time fine tuning those details anyway. Just going to reduce the size of the brush to 1% and turn it up to 25% and just start to add some really fine tune and thin small details for distant clouds down here. In fact, I might go to this third color in and although it's quite a strong brown color, because we've got a lot of red and mix it in with that bluey gray and I think it will create a nice balance. I may even go over this red area and bring out some more of the red later again anyway. In fact, we'll do that now. So we've got that layer with the red on and we'll just go back to this color. We'll turn it up to the 6% again and we've got it on the 25%. I'm just gonna bring in some more of that, make it more dramatic. Why not? Go back to the orange layer, do the same with the orange underneath it. Sometimes you just, as you go along, you realize you just want more powerful colors to really be impacting. And then we'll do the same with the yellow on the very end as well. So we'll just bring that in a little bit more. You can only sometimes see the, the impact of it once you have the contrast of those other colors. 
go back to the top layer where we had the cloud and the dark cloud detail and we'll go back to these colors again turn it back down to the two percent and i'm just starting to add more of these dark cloud details back in there down to the one percent just for some of these down here just to really get some thin shapes and back up to the two for some of more of these as well Back to the layer 9 and the lighter grey colour and we're just alternating, just keep building up the two cloud textures. Again, this is a little time consuming but sometimes these kind of details just require that time putting in. Okay, I'll come back to the sky a little later if I feel it needs more work, but we're going to create another layer, go back to our colours, and we've got these reddy brown colours, so we'll go for the first one, and I'm going to switch to the medium brush, one that's a bit more defined, it is a rock we're going to be creating, we'll put it at 2% size, and we'll go for the 50% opacity initially, so we'll start from that horizon line, and we'll bring in the rock shape. Now, again, this is a specific rock in Australia and I have got an image that I'm using as a reference on this occasion. I don't always, but often I will. And this is a famous specific rock formation. So I'm using this just to get the bare bones of it and the effect and the, the shape a little more accurate than I would do from my own imagination anyway. So having said that, if you wanted to just go for a slightly different formation and just have it something completely imaginary, then, then that's obviously something you can do as well but I'm not trying to get it 100% accurate. If I really wanted to go for complete accuracy, I might really spend all the time getting all the little lumps and bumps of this rock structure as accurate as I could, but I'm just getting the effect for us. So now I've got a basic structure. I'm gonna turn it up, put it up to 90% opacity and 3% size and just go over this structure. I don't care if it goes a little bit below the horizon line because I'm gonna draw over that anyway. Okay, so we're going to go to our other colours. We've got a slightly darker colour here, the next one along. We'll stay on the same layer, but we're going to use the medium brush at a lower size, down to 2%, the lower end of 2%. And if I turn the opacity down to about 50% this time, and 2% size, I'm just going to start introducing some textures, suggestion that it's obviously not going to be flat. The lighting is mainly coming from behind in this and there's not a lot of light in the scene anyway. There is, but there's no direct light on it. So we're not going to get too much detail in this. It is pretty much a silhouette, but we will get some hints at some of the details, some of the shapes. Probably will create another layer, go back to our colors We've used the first two, so I'll go for this third colour now of the reddy browns. This is going to be the highlight colour, so I'll go for it 2% size and 50% opacity. And I'll just bring it to, and I'll just use it to bring out some of the highlights, some of the shapes a little bit more of this reddy brown colour. I could definitely spend longer, really fine tuning this, but I'm just going for something of the effect here. And then staying on this same line, I'm going to go for this very darkest red and just maybe pick out, maybe with a lower opacity, more about 30%. Stay on the 2% size, and just pick out just hints of texture. In fact, it's still quite strong that, so I'm gonna turn the opacity down even further to about 20%, and just really subtly start to build in some extra textures in here. I don't want this to be too much, really. Especially seeing as I'm really not being very precise with any of these shapes and forms. So I don't want to make too much of the details unless I was going to spend the time to get it super accurate. We're just going for the effect, aren't we? We're just going for the effect. Um, I might just turn the size of that brush up to 5%, really low on the opacity. That's about 5% again. 
and I'll just go over that a little bit just to start to darken the whole thing in a little bit more perhaps not too much just go over it a little bit and then we're going to create another layer go back to our colors we're going to go for the bottom row so we go for this dark color now and we'll have it on 2% size and 90% opacity and we'll just go to the section where the sky stops and we'll just clip off the bottom of this rock all the way across now to the other side and then hold it and we'll get that nice straight line then we're going to turn the opacity to about 70% stay in about 2% size and just create some distant features over on this side doesn't have to be particularly articulated just some shapes and then just a hint of it as we go further along but not very much maybe just a hint of a couple of things here just so it's not completely dead flat but really subtle and then we'll stay on this same layer but we're going to go to the next color along now which is this slightly more well, it's actually orange but because it's in the gray it almost appears green in fact so we'll put that at about 3% size and about 60% opacity. And I'm just going to bring that now across and I don't mind doing it in a few dashes just to keep it quite rough. But generally follow that line all the way across like that. Then we'll go to this third color along, put it up to about 6% size and about 50% opacity or thereabouts, doesn't have to be. Bang on 50% but around that. And then we'll just bring in some of this orange color, extend that across. In fact, we'll reduce that down to 4% just so it can be a bit more precise. Extend that across and then I can increase it, bring it down a bit further. It's very orange this, we're gonna to have to subdue that. So let's do that now in fact. So back to our colors and we'll start using these colors now. So we'll go for this second one in you can see it's very much a red orange and again we'll just start adding this to the mix from the bottom so I'm going to put around 10% size and then we'll start to reduce the opacity so I'm going to put it down to 20% opacity and I'll just start to just have those blend together a little bit so fade it out as it gets nearer the top and then more of it near the bottom back to our colors we we'll go back a color so the third one in from the right there We'll bring some of that in. Just had a little bit of variation in there too. And finally, add a bit of that very end color because it's really nice and dark. So we'll bring some more of that in, especially near the bottom. Maybe increase the size of that brush up to like 20%, still low at 20% too. We'll just extend that lightly across there a little bit. Okay, so you can see we've got all of that on one layer. I'm gonna create a layer above it. Back to our colors and we've got that color now, the fourth one and the fifth one. So I'm gonna use both these colors, the fourth one first, back down to about 2% and we'll go in fact to the soft brush again. So back down to 2% on the soft brush and about 30% opacity. And I'm just gonna start cutting up this area with textures, dashes, distant shrubs. Just start to break it up a little bit. Then we'll go to the next color along, which is the fifth color. And again, we can start to add some distant shrubs, tufts of grass, things that are growing in here. Maybe we'll just turn that down to the lowest part of 2% so we can really be a little bit more precision based. Again, I'm not really zooming in. We don't need to. If we stick to these brush sizes, then we can be quite precise anyway. And we'll just get some of these distant mounds of grass, tufts of grass, and we'll go back to our colors. In fact, we could use something that's a little bit more green. So I'm gonna skip one, I'm gonna to go to this, which is the fourth one in from the right. And it just has a hint more green. It's not gonna be massively different, but it's just a little more vibrant. Perhaps not particularly noticeably different, but still. It adds variety, and sometimes that little bit of variety is detected by the eye and it just lends a little bit more believability to an image. And we can add some bigger features too. Again, plants and shrubs and organic matter. We could even now have some trees that are down near the base of the rock. So 
we could continue to use this or perhaps even go for a darker one. So this fifth in from the left is a darker one. So we can use that perhaps just to create some greenery perhaps that is near the base of the, the rock. It doesn't have to be particularly defined, it's just giving the essence of something there. So I'm going to bring that across a little bit. Turn the opacity up to 60% so it's more noticeable. And I'm just going to bring that across a little bit more, again breaking up some of that lighter green that we had before, although I might go over with the lighter green just to define little bits of it. And staying on that, we'll keep it at the 60%. It's quite nice actually to go for some really powerful shapes, some real contrasting dark tones ready to pop out, look good. Now sometimes within a scene, you're going to get a lot of atmospherics and the colours are going to get a lot lighter in the distance, but this isn't really one of those scenes. Everything is quite silhouetted and there's not a lot of atmosphere as such. To dilute the, the tone in the distance, you're going to get some real dark blacks even in the distance now. So it gives less of that sense of distance. There is a slight cooling off of colour, but really not very much. So you can go back in and amongst that and we can use maybe the fourth colour in and if we wanted to just reclaim some gaps and some extra light brown texture in the mix too then there's nothing wrong with breaking that up and making it even more textured, peppering some of that lighter brown in there as well. Combinations of the two, so alternate backwards and forwards. So I'm going to go back again for the fifth colour, again on the 2% size and 60% opacity for all of this now. Okay, that gives a quite a nice effect for the distant features. I'm going to create another layer just so I don't end up ruining what I've got. We're going to continue a little bit of that theme. I might just start moving on a little bit to some slightly more vibrant green. So I'm going to go for the fourth in from the right. And again, I'm just going to create some more shrubs. Keep it quite vague. Maybe I'll turn the brush size up to the slightly higher on the 2%. I can always go in with a slightly reduced brush size to add some more refined details if I need to. Again, just create some mounds of grass, of earth, of greenery. And as we come down into this area, we might just get some real separation of some of these shapes into more differentiated separate mounds and blobs. Again, I'm not being particularly neat because we can go over it with some grass texture and some other details too. I'm just trying to get the, the rough sense of placement in initially, I suppose. And although I've been supplied an image to generally work from, I'm actually making up the shape. So I'm going for the overall effects from a reference, but I'm not copying each individual shape. And that goes for the, the cloud features too. I'm going to create another layer, first colour here on the bottom row. I'm going to put it on the artistic leatherwood brush. I'm going to have it at around 2% size, but low on the opacity it's around 20%. And I'm just going to start bringing in some of this texture to the bottom part of these mounds just to give it a little bit more interest. So on the underside of these mounds on that top layer, with this leatherwood brush, it, I'm only using it this slightly textured brush just to stop it looking too flat and uninteresting. But on the underside of these mounds, we're just creating a slight shadow. And we haven't tied it into the orange colour yet, but we will do that. But we'll just start with a slight sense of, of a darker tone on the bottom part of these mounds to begin with. Again, I'm not spending a huge amount of time refining these. It's just getting quickly to the general effect. And then we can alternate to the greens. If we really want to just get them in there quickly, we can just block in these green areas, probably start with a darker colour. So we'll go for the fifth colour in. Just block in some textures here to begin with, I guess. And over here. And if I want some features here, I can just do that again with the leatherwood brush. Start to close down more and more of this. And then again, we'll go back to that black colour and with a lower opacity, because it's really quite a dark colour, again, down to the 20%, you can just feed in from the bottom areas of these mounds some slight 
shadow just to break it up. Then I'm going to create another layer, but I'm going to put it underneath that and and then I'm going to create another layer, put it underneath the layer we've just created and I'm going to go back to my airbrushing and soft brush. I'm going to have it at around 3% size, 30% opacity and we're still going to use this dark colour and I'm just going to use it just to soften in, create some hints of soft, more shadowed areas immediately on the areas underneath these mounds too because we need to tie it into that ground area. And it's going to look like they're a little bit detached unless we create a sense of the impact of these mounds in terms of shadows basically. And we can just turn that down to 2% size still and just create some extra texture, just some dots, just some roughing up because we've got earth there's red earth which is like sand pretty much very arid dry area obviously so we can just add some just like texture in and amongst that back up to our top layer create another layer and we've just got this middle area now so i'm quite happy with the distance area i'm more happy with the foreground although we're going to keep adding some detail on top of that but there's just this middle section here that it feels a little bit empty so we'll go back to our colors and i'm going to go for the fourth color in and with the soft brush set to 2% size and 30% opacity. I'm just going to start breaking up some of these areas. In fact, I'm going to turn it down to the lower end of 2%, put it up to 40% opacity and just break up this particular area, make it slightly less flat looking. And then switch to a dark color, so the fifth color along. And again, just carefully start to add some broken texture here just to disrupt and it stop looking so unfeatureless and boring. Presumably we're going to have a continuation of what we've got here going off into the distance basically. So any areas where it doesn't appear like we've got any features we just need to go in there and just add more points of interest. Okay so I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to go to my brushes and I'm going to go to my sketching brush. I'm going to go to the 6B pencil. Set to default settings so you don't need to change anything. And I want this to be quite rough again. If I chose something like an inking then it's a really clean, solid, crisp line. And I want this to be a little bit more sketchy and broken. So I think something like this sketching 6B pencil will work quite well. So I'm going to go to my colours. I'm going to choose these colours at the end. I'm going to go for the second from the right to begin with. So in terms of size, I'm going to put it somewhere around the 40% size and about the 25% opacity. And I'm just going to start bringing in some grass and we're keeping it quite random. So keeping going in different sort of directions. And it's just going off the bottom of the screen there too. Bottom of the canvas. I'm just bringing some sense of dry grass detail into this scene. And we've got it for this detail, so we can continue to do that in the distance as well. So any of these grass mounds can have some grass, some dry grass growing from the very top of it as well. And it can be a subtle feature like that. Again, we can go to the lighter color as well. So we can alternate between the two, really mix between them. And we can go to the, the top of any of these mounds and, and just start to create this kind of texture. So alternate between those and really start to build in this effect. You don't really need to change the brush size, even if it goes in the distance. I'm not too bothered. It's going to become a little less noticeable in the distance as these light colors merge into that lighter background anyway, but that's fine, that's good. So as you're adding it, try and sort of alternate your brush strokes. So it looks a little bit more natural. If they're all going straight up in one direction, then they're not going to look very natural. So try and mix it up a little bit. Maybe leave some gaps. It doesn't all have to be completely uniformly filled in. Maybe 
maybe for these foreground grass, you can just add on the very top of them, it's just some slightly broken, more extra texture just at the very top of the grass features. And then for the slightly more distant ones, you don't need to bother with too much of that. Again, alternate the colors. You can even go back to some of these colors if you want the slightly warmer. Keep alternating, don't get stuck with the same one. I'm gonna turn the opacity up a little bit more for the distance, just so we can see them a bit more. Otherwise we're gonna lose those details. Let's just turn it down a little bit as we get further away. You don't need to worry too much, but perhaps just a little bit. So I've turned it down to more like 30%, just for the, the middle distance. And we're not really gonna notice this kind of grass in the very distance anyway. Again, keep alternating. Takes a little time, but I think the overall effect, once you've done quite a lot of it, I think it all starts to pull together. So it's worth the time and effort. It's a cumulative effect, so you've got to stick with it and keep building it up. Maybe just go to the lighter green here, which is third in from the right. And then we can just use that to add a hint of that green where we really start to see some of these mounds here as well. We can just go in there and add some of these green blades into those textures as well. Not so keen on some of these in the foreground, so I might just get rid of some of these. I don't think they're necessarily working quite so well. I might do some, but I felt they were a little bit too much, so I'll just get rid of some of those. And obviously, you know, whenever you feel you've gone too far, just you can go in there carefully with an eraser and just reduce down any bits where you think it's not working quite as well. And then in addition to the, the long grass, I'm just gonna go along the top edge of some of those mounds with this lighter color here, the third one in. And I'm just going to perhaps just focus a little bit on the, just the very top edge of it. So we've got the longer grass that pokes up a little bit further, but just to really ramp up a little bit of that effect, we can just concentrate some of that lighter color, just run along the very top in a jaggedy motion just to sell that illusion a little bit more, especially for the middle distance ones. Just gonna go back to the shadow layer. So that was my layer 16, in fact. And I'm gonna go back to that black color with my airbrushing soft brush. And I'm just going to bring in some slightly darker tones just where I feel it's necessary here and there. So I'm gonna turn the opacity up to 60% and just slightly ramp up some of the dark tone, like I say. So you can continue refining this to your heart's content, perhaps just a few more details in the actual, the rock in the backgrounds with that, some of that dark color, you can just go in there and further refine. You could go back into the sky layers with our dark colors here and we could further refine some of these clouds but I think the overall effect is there maybe just a one or two slight definitions of, of clouds over this side and over here as well but I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point I think the overall effect is achieved and I hope you've enjoyed following along if you do have a go make sure to follow the links in the video description to the various places that you can share them with me Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification. It will tell you exactly when I put up new tutorials like this. And I hope to catch you back here soon. See you soon.